It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson. That's G on the ones and twos. And this is The Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. Startup Nation, we have an amazing, an amazing guest today. I really want you uh, to, to open your ears, get your notepads out, because it's going to be a really good one. He is the founder and chairman of Paychecks, the owner of Greenlight Networks, the former owner of the Buffalo Sabres, and the author of Built Not Born, a self-made billionaire's no-nonsense guide for entrepreneurs. He is the one, the only, Tom Golisano. How's it going, Tom? It's going great, Dominic. All righty. this interview. All righty. Tom, first things first, if you would, kind of tell me about growing up a little bit. You know, you're the immigrant of Sicilian parents. Kind of tell me about your parents a little bit. Sure. Uh, my mom was a seamstress. She worked for a company called Dickey Freeman, which was the manufacturer of men's clothes. Okay. And my father had various jobs. For a while, he had his own heating business. Uh, you know, uh, before World War II, people usually uh, heated their homes with uh, coal. Finally, technology came along, and it was able to, uh, you were able to convert your coal furnace to, to either oil or uh, natural gas. So he went into business converting furnaces uh, to those new methods. And he did it for a number of years until competition and, uh, and difficulty getting units started to happen. And then he became a salesperson for a couple of companies that sold macaroni products. Gotcha. Uh, we grew up in a town called Arundi Quite, just outside of Rochester, New York. I guess we would be considered at the time middle class uh, kids. I was one of very few Italians in the neighborhood, and they used to remind me of that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we had an event happen in the family. Um, hmm. My brother was killed in uh, in the Korean War. Gotcha. Sorry to hear that. In uh, 1951, and it had a profound effect on my family. My father, uh, his business uh, was starting to go downward, and that exacerbated the situation. Gotcha. Uh, so we ended up uh, going through bankruptcy as a family, and I was there when they, they came to get the car and almost tried to take the house, but uh, uh, they fought that one off. Uh, I went to high school. I was an average student in high school, and uh, when it came time for graduation and maybe going to college, I had no no money whatsoever within the family. So I worked for a year in a bank uh, in Rochester okay. and applied to a, a small school in upstate New York called Alfred State Tech. Uh, I got accepted. I saved my pennies for a year. And went there uh, for a uh, two-year associate's degree in business. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And once again, Startup Nation, we're talking to Tom Galasano, the author of Built Not Born, which is actually out today, uh, believe it or not. You can get that on TomGalasano.com or to uh, Amazon if that's where you get your local books for sure. Now, Tom, one of the reasons, I, first of all, I read the entire book and I loved it. I Good. really did. Uh, you gave common sense, practical uh, and, you know, uh, knowledge about running a business, starting a business, you know, spotting entrepreneurship and stuff like that. Uh, but you also have great anecdotes in the, you know, in the book with like stories and stuff like that. And one of those stories I was very fascinated about was about you and a friend at a bowling alley in a business venture that you had. Kind of share with me a little bit about that. Say that one again, Dominic. Uh, the one where you, uh, you and a friend had a, a venture in a bowling alley with like yeah, tickets. Yeah. Yeah. School. Yeah, kind of share with me that story a little bit, if you would. Uh, back in the middle 50s uh, to late 50s, bowling was a very popular uh, recreational activity, uh, and especially open bowling. Not leagues, but open bowling, where people would just come into the bowling alley. Right. So we had a, a very large facility near where we lived, and if you went there on Friday nights and Saturday nights and sometimes Sunday afternoons, uh, there were long lines of people waiting to get an alley. Hmm because they were so crowded. So my friend and I came up with the idea, you know, what if we went there like on a Saturday night around 6 o'clock, and they used to hand out tickets, which was, you know, like you're doing a deli right. for service. Uh, so we would ask for tickets, uh, which would be numbered, and then when that ticket got close to being called, we would uh, find somebody who might be interested in buying it. Now, you can imagine two fellows coming in with two dates, and finding out they got a two-hour wait for a bowling alley, 
and we appear and say, well, you can have the next one or, you know, and, and, and within two or three. Uh, there was certainly a market for that. And we would either sell the tickets to, to the party or sometimes we'd just give it to them and maybe hand our, hold our hand out for a, for a tip or a gratuity. Right. But we did this for quite a while, some number of weeks, and it was very profitable. But then the <laughs> owner of the bowling alley caught us doing it. Yeah. And didn't like the idea, so he uh, he kind of stopped us from doing it. I imagine not. I imagine not. You know, do you think if you would have cut him in on it, he would have let you continue that? Geez, I never thought of that. I should have <laughs> thought of that. Fair enough. And I, I love that story because it really just goes to show that, you know, the, the you know, you had a, the, the entrepreneurial mindset at a very early age, you know, makes sense because, you know, you talked about your dad and his business and stuff like that. But it really does highlight that, you know, uh, entrepreneur is an entrepreneur, whether you have the, the, the capital to start one or you just have an idea, like you, as long as you kind of act on that idea. Uh, that story really does illustrate that. So I appreciate you sharing that for sure. I really enjoyed that story for sure. But one of the things you also talk about in the book, uh, Tom, is that, you know, having a nine to five job has some risk as well. Can I share with us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Um, and uh, quite a bit of thought went into this. And right. when I was uh, in the early days of Paychex, when I was uh, getting people interested in starting offices in other parts of the country, uh, there actually ended up being 17 of them, that people that lived in Rochester, New York, and moved to other parts of the country to start a paychecks office. So I used to, you know, counsel them on why they should do it. Mm. And what I would say to them, you know, uh, they say going into business or having a business is risky. Well, I think working for a company is risky. For example, you, you know, you could do a very good job as an employee, but if your boss or his bo your boss's department doesn't do well, that's going to have a negative effect on you. Absolutely. Or even if your boss's department does well, but the division does poorly, that's going to have an impact on you. And you never know when the company's going to get uh, sold out from under you. So I'd consider that fairly risky. On the other hand, if you own a business, you're not subject to those risks, and you also have some other advantages. One is... Uh, you can always sell your job or sell your company if it's a business that you own. And you can't sell your job, of course. For sure. Also, you might have the possibility of passing the uh, business on to an heir, you know, a son or a daughter or someone like that. And third, if you become physically or mentally disabled for whatever reasons, you're probably going to be far better off if you had a business enterprise that was going to be liquid. For sure. So... And, you know, I could use a perfect example for Rochester, New York. It is a company called Eastman Kodak that was based in Rochester. Right. In the early 1980s, it had 62,000 employees in the Rochester area. Today, it has less than 3,000 employees. Mm. So, you know, you got to say that working for Eastman Kodak, which used to be cradle-to-grave security, is now a huge, risky business. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, you know, uh, Radio Shack also comes to mind as well. Oh, when you, when you yeah, there's about there's a number of them out there. Think of the telephone booth, you know, on the corner. Right. That world. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that for sure. All right, Startup Nation. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. But when we come back, I'm going to ask Tom where he got the $3,000 from to start paychecks. My name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. Startup Nation. We tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. This episode of The Startup Life is also brought to you by our amazing partners at SCORE Memphis. Look, 
Entrepreneurship is hard, and there is nothing like a mentor that can help you navigate those waters. And that is what SCORE provides. SCORE mentors provide years of expertise and have resources that will have you flourishing and profitable on your path to entrepreneurship. If you are in need of a mentor, give SCORE a call. The number is 901-544-3588 or go to their website at memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. Startup Nation, Kenda and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stop by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us, that's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick and mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, start your Target journey with the link in our show notes where you can expect more and pay less. Startup Nation, welcome back to The Startup Life as we continue our conversation with Tom Galasano, founder and chairman of Paychex. So one of the things, Startup Nation, that you may not know about, Tom, is that, you know, uh, in order to get the money to start Paychex, he actually had another company before that called Bidder's Guide, uh, in which, you know, uh, which is actually still up and running after he sold it for $3,000. So kind of share with us, you know, Bidder's Guide, uh, if you would, Tom, and some of the lessons you learned, before, you know, that you took into uh, starting Paychex. Sure. Uh, I was a salesperson for the Burroughs Corporation, and we used to sell accounting machines anywhere from the $3,000 to $8,000 range for accounting applications like accounts receivable, accounts payable, and even payroll. And one day I made a presentation to a small village outside of Rochester to do their water billing to their residents on an accounting machine that I had to offer. Uh, the town clerk really liked the application and it looked like they were pretty happy with my sales presentation. So they kind of indicated I was going to get the deal. When I went back to the branch office, uh, Burroughs, and said to my branch manager, I think we got this one, he said, well, make sure they advertise their bids in the uh, uh, Churchville newspaper. And I said, I, you know, I thought for a minute, I said, oh, I get it. If they put it in the Churchville newspaper rather than the Rochester Daily newspaper, our competition probably wouldn't see it and won't be in a, therefore won't be in a position to bid on it. Right. So I got to thinking, I said, you know, I wonder how many times the competition does that to us. And then I started thinking about all the products and services municipalities and school districts buy. And in New York State, the law at the time was if you were a municipality or a school district you, and were spending over $1,000 on a particular purchase, you do have to advertise for biz. So I went to the library and I, you know, found out how many newspapers there were in upstate New York. Hmm. Ended up there were 53 dailies. And... How many weeklies, which also had bid, uh, bid advertisements in them, uh, there were 350 of those. Wow. Then I figured out how much it would cost to uh, subscribe to all of them and have them sent to a post office box. And then once I had that information, I could clip the, uh, the bid advertisements out of the paper, reduce them to a mimeographed, and it was indeed mimeographed publication that I would put out three times a week and sell this service to companies that sold products and services to school districts and municipalities. And when you think about it, that's a vast world. Absolutely. About school uh, school buses, audiovisual equipment, auditorium seating, and I, you know, highway equipment, and I go on and on. So I put a price tag on it, and one day I was sitting in the branch at Burroughs, and, you know, it was a Friday night, and you know how salespeople like to get together and talk about going to business. Absolutely. We did that. We were doing that. And the branch manager walked in and heard the conversation. And he said to us, me included, you guys are all alike. You talk about it, but you never do it. Now, that was on a Friday night. Monday morning, I handed my resignation in and said I was going to start a company called Bitter's Guide, which I did. 
And I worked it full time for two years, traveling around the state and selling selling subscriptions. And I'd come home at night and publish the publication. Uh, after two years, I decided, although I was making a living, it wasn't going to satisfy all of my economic goals. So I decided to just get another job and keep Bitter's Guide. Gotcha. And that's when I went to work for a payroll processing company in Rochester mm. and produced Bitter's Guide at night. That's so good. what's interesting about it, that, yeah. that was in, ni- ni- I'm dating myself though, that was in 1966 <laughs> no or something like that. Uh, I was at a public event in Rochester a couple of months ago, and uh, there a couple of years ago, and two young men came up to me and said, Tom, we own Bitter's Guide. And I was absolutely amazed because wow. I had sold it. Right. To fund the purchase or to fund the startup of Paychex. Right, for sure, for sure. But today it's still going. I hear that. How does that make you feel to see that it's still going? Is that kind of that's kind of awesome, right? It made me very happy about the idea and having the idea. Right. I certainly it was a need, you know, because a sales organization that sells those types of products know almost a hundred percent that uh, every transaction that's happening in the state. And that's very valuable information for monitoring the results of your salespeople. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure, Tom. So one of the most important chapters for me, I believe, for and you know, I, I believe for you as all as well, Startup Nation, is chapter three money matters. Because Tom, you are very adamant about knowing your numbers, balance sheet, profit loss statements cash flow, spreadsheet, forecast, things of that nature. You know, I know you were the uh, founding sponsor of the Clinton Global Initiative, uh, and, and you would walk talk to President Clinton about his numbers line by line. So in your own words, Tom, if you would, just kind of share with us a little bit about why knowing your numbers in your business is just so important. Well, my experience with, uh, with entrepreneurs, that this is an area that I feel that a lot of them are very weak in. If you don't understand your profit and loss statement and your balance sheet and your cash flow projection, you are putting yourself at a real disadvantage. And too often I've run into entrepreneurs that do not understand uh, how these documents are created and what they mean and, and the value of it and their importance. So I would recommend to any entrepreneur, even if you have to take a class at night on fundamental accounting. Right. I think it's a heck of a good idea to do that because you don't want to be caught in a position where you get these financial statements and if you don't understand what they mean to you and if you cannot look for errors in them, for example, if your person doing your accounting statements for you may make mistakes, if you can't find those mistakes or recognize them, you're in for a lot of trouble. So I would recommend heartily to anybody that's in business, if they don't have a fundamental knowledge of profit and loss statements and balance sheets, they ought to get that knowledge as soon as they can. For sure. For sure. And, and one of the things I love about your book, Tom, is that like it's 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 kind of like a textbook. But and I mean that in the most flattering way possible, because you even have uh, a sheet where it's like like a sample uh, uh, statement, you know, uh, where you kind of give an example of like, you know, how to read it and stuff like that. So I really love this book for entrepreneurs. Once again, we're talking to Tom Galasano author of Built Not Born. I want to ask you this, Tom, because I, I found that, you know, throughout the book that you're a bit of a prankster a little bit. I, I saw the story about, you know, with a very uh, luxurious car and a crane. Uh, and, and you talk about how that's kind of good for morale when building a team. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Where does that prankster side come from? <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly where it came from, okay. but I really believe that in your lifetime, you ought to have some real fun. I hear that. And uh, and uh, I certainly believed in that concept. And the the thing you talked about there is uh, one of the senior officers at Paychex used to drive a Mercedes sports car in the winter time. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ever lived in Rochester, New York, you don't like to, you shouldn't be driving sports cars in the winter time. Uh, so I used to kid him about it. But one day I came into work as we were building a, a five story addition to our building. Uh, I said, "Gee, I wonder if the contractor building that would." Build me a little platform so I could put my friend Gene's car on it and just raise it up above the building, above the steelwork. <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah, I'll do it. And I got his second set of keys from his wife. Then we sent him out to lunch with some other people. And when he came back, there was his car swinging up on the crane 
five stories in the air. It was windy. I was afraid it might have been a $75,000 joke, <laughs> which I would have had to pay for if I ever right. fell off that platform. Right. But people remem- remembered it for years, particularly people that were in the restaurant across the street watching this thing happen. And, of course, Gene, being the good sport he was, when he came back and he saw his car up there, he, he turned to me and he said, boy, I wish I had thought of that. Right. <laughs> so if he had thought of it first, I probably would have been the victim. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. Now, speaking to Gene, I, I want to ask you this because, you know, we all know in entrepreneurship, you know, there are, you know, profit margins and you talked about the numbers and building a team and things of that nature. But there's also things where it doesn't always go right. And you and you talk about that in the book where Gene comes over to, you know, kind of check in on you and, and you op- and he opens the fridge and there's nothing there. Kind of talk about the mental fortitude, Tom, of building a company like Paychex or just any company for that matter. Well, that, uh, that was true. Uh, Gene came over to the house. He opened right. up the refrigerator door and saw that there wasn't much in there and said, would you guys like to go out to dinner on me? And I had some friends, more than, more than one for sure, that understood my financial plight in the early days of Paychex. Right. They used to take me out uh, to dinner, to lunch. Sometimes it would take me golfing because they knew I couldn't afford it. Gotcha. And I went four years without really getting a paycheck. Mm. Uh, now my spouse at the time, Gloria worked for a nonprofit organization, which right. it really helped, but it wasn't a lot of money. So even with her income, we, you know, we had to really skimp by, but it was four years before I could really say, gee, I could write my own paycheck now and, uh, have it covered. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing. I, I really wanted to highlight that. But because I think a lot of times, you know, when we're out and we're jet set off on our own and we start a company and stuff like that, we think that we're the only ones who go through these things. And so, you know, uh, when you talk about the success that you've had, even you have some of the same experiences. And so I think that gives other entrepreneurs hope, Tom. What do you think? I hope so. If, yeah. if there's anything I want to accomplish with this book, it's inspiring people to be entrepreneurs. And also you used the term I liked, uh, making it a textbook. I really think it would have some value in educational arenas. Absolutely. And you actually talk about that, you know, and, and some things that we could do better in education. It was definitely one of those things about uh, spurring entrepreneurship and teach entrepreneurship to kids of America and stuff like that. So I really appreciate that. Now, we Tom, have to remember they're the ones that create the most jobs. There you go. There you go. I appreciate that. So, Tom, you're also a, a master negotiator, and one of your f- famous tactics is the pregnant pause. And there's a story when you were an owner of the Buffalo Sabres that I, I just thought was hilarious. Maybe not everybody else, but I thought it was funny. But it, it, you're talking about uh, a 250000 rider on a contract uh, for a player and a 45-minute 45 45 minute pause at a lunch. Kind of share, share with us that story a little bit, if you would. Sure. We, we traded for a player for the Buffalo Sabres. Right. And when you trade for a player, you accept his contract for the most part that he had with the other team, especially if there's the liability involved. Right. And the liability here was if he played in a certain number of minutes or games, he would get a $250,000 bonus. Well, the general manager of the hockey department who was responsible for negotiating these trades didn't pass that information on to the coaching staff because he didn't know about it, Hmm. which means the contract wasn't read thoroughly. So uh, the the coach uh, uh, took the player past the the, uh, time required to get the bonus, so we had to pay it. Well, I found out about it, and I had a meeting with uh, the the hockey manager, the general manager, and, and two of the other working partners, and we sat down in a little card room in my house, and I brought it up, and I said it cost this team two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It shouldn't have cost them that, right. but it did. And then I went silent. And we were in a small room, maybe ten by ten, at a round little round circular table, and we just sat there for forty five minutes. Nobody said a word, especially myself. Right. Finally, <laughs> the general manager said, "Tom." It was my mistake. If you want me to pay for it, I will. And I said to him, Darcy, you don't have to pay for it. I just like the fact that you acknowledged it. And we just went on from there. But we did sit there for 45 minutes in dead silence. Right. That, 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 that's wild. I, I bet that was just an awkward, like you're talking about almost an hour. 
<laughs> just dead silent. That's crazy. But why, why does that work so well in a negotiation? I know this is a different context, but you do that when in negotiating as well, asking direct questions and stuff like that. Kind of talk about how why that pause is so effective in negotiating. Well, uh, let's take the simplest form of negotiation. Sure. That's, that's a sales presentation. Right. A salesperson is selling a product. Okay. Mm-hmm. You get to a certain point where you've given all the information that you want to deliver to the prospective client, and then I think it's time for you to be quiet. Shut up. (laughs) And let the client respond. And don't say anything or do anything until the client does respond. Now, he's either going to raise objections, and then you should be able to uh, be ready to handle them, or he's going to say, yeah, okay, I'll take the product. But if you keep talking while he's going through that deliberation in your mind, you're liable to say things that are going to turn him off or change his mind. Or you're going to take up so much time that he's going to put off making the decision. Gotcha. And I found it to be very effective in the sales presentation and also when you're doing other negotiations with people. Uh, Just there's a time in the negotiation to be quiet and let the other person talk so you can find out what they're thinking and what they're thinking about. For sure. All right, Startup Nation. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. And when we come back, I'm going to ask Tom about the perception that people have sometimes about very successful business people. My name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company, or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681 or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well, DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. This episode of The Startup Life is also brought to you by our amazing partners at SCORE Memphis. Look, entrepreneurship is hard, and there is nothing like a mentor that can help you navigate those waters. And that is what SCORE provides. SCORE mentors provide years of expertise and have resources that will have you flourishing and profitable on your path to entrepreneurship. If you are in need of a mentor, give SCORE a call. The number is 901-544-3588 or go to their website at memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. Startup Nation, Kenda and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stop by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us, that's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick and mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, Start your Target journey with the link in our show notes, where you can expect more and pay less. Welcome back, Startup Nation, as we continue our conversation with Tom Galasano, the author of Built Not Born. Now, Tom, I want to ask you this, because when you talk about somebody who's had the success that you've had with paychecks and other business ventures as well, sometimes people have certain preconceived notions. Like they say, like, I wonder how, you know, you know I wonder who you had to step on or screw over to get to the point where he is, but you know, you really don't roll like that. You even said in your book and you have a quote that says, quote, I've never agreed with business gurus who treat business like war when it all costs seems like to be their mantra, 
But wins like that are short, often short lived. Any relationship built on someone having to be the loser can never be a good good for a business in the long run, end quote. So, Tom, I want to ask you this, like, where do you think that perception comes from? Like you in order to have that type of success, you had to screw some over. You had to step on somebody. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was making a presentation to an entrepreneur group down here in Florida a couple mm-hmm. of years ago mm-hmm. and a went through a, a Q&A period and a woman asked the same question. How many here? What, here's, here's what she said. How many people did you have to step on while you were climbing the corporate ladder? Mm. And my response was exactly this. The key, the secret to success is not to step on people as you're going up the ladder. The key is to bring them with you. I hear that. Make them successful. And I think I did that very well with Paychex. As I mentioned earlier, I had 17 partners and franchises that uh, went into the business in other parts of the country. And we grew the organization uh, as a team. We didn't step on anybody. We didn't. We didn't have to run anybody out of business or anything like that. Um, so, to me, it's it's very obvious. A deal has to be a, a, at least an average deal for both people. Gotcha. One deal. If a deal is so heavenly favoring one party and not the other, it's not good business. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. Now, Tom, you also talk about like when you're hiring people and building a company culture in the interview process, you pay attention to certain things. You pay attention to uh, if they're offered water, if the person says thank you, you pay attention to after they leave, if they push the chair back up. What are some of the like what are those tales for you? Like when people don't do that, if they say thank you or don't say thank you, how does that relate to how effective of an employee or team member they'll be in your opinion? Well, one of the theorems I had in the book is when you're hiring people, you hire attitude rather than skill. Right. Okay. If somebody comes in in a job interview and sits down at your desk and you ask them if they'd like a cup of coffee and they say yes and, uh, you know, your assistant comes in with the coffee and offers it to them and they don't say thank you, Hmm. you know, obviously poor manners. Or worse yet, when they take the cup and leave it on my desk when they walk out of the room, <laughs> you know, instead of saying, where do I put this cup or I'll take it with me. Just basic common sense. So if you can't get by those those kinds of scenarios with me, then I'm probably not going to be too excited about hiring you. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that for sure. So I, I want to ask you this, Tom, because in, in, in the towards the end of the book, you talk about, you know, some of the regrets that, you know, you may have had, you know, on your business career and stuff like that. And I wanted to ask you about another one because you ran for governor of New York uh, three times. Right. And Correct. I guess there was speculation that you may run a fourth time. Do you regret not running that fourth time? And the only reason I ask is because I looked at the election results for those three election cycles And each cycle, you gained more and more of a share of the vote. So does that regret ever set in? Do you ever think about, like, man, maybe I should have ran that fourth time at all? Well, sometimes I'm very happy I didn't get elected. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Based on what I see these politicians go through. Fair enough. Fair Uh, enough. Sure, I considered it. But, uh, uh, you know, I ran as an independent. Right. A Democrat or Republican. And many people have told me many times that if I had run under the banner of a national party, Democrat or Republican, I probably would have gotten elected at least one of those times. Gotcha. But I opted not to do that. Uh, Do I have regrets about the fact that I didn't go with a major party? Not really. Uh, Like I said, after watching uh, what happens to these politicians and the things they have to deal with, maybe I I should be happy I wasn't elected. For sure. For sure. Thank you for but sharing. But I that. wanted to be governor. Gotcha. <laughs> no question about it. And Fair I enough. I tried as hard as I could. Fair enough. For sure. For sure. So, you know, Tom, one of the questions I'm always curious when I when I bring people on the show is that, like, you know, when they're an entrepreneur and they're a business owner, all the decisions that they make really doesn't just affect them and the business, but it also affects the people that they employ, Right. But, Absolutely. but for you, it's it's actually a little different. When you think about paychecks, right? You right now, Paycheck Services Startup Nation just about over six hundred and seventy thousand different clients, and small businesses are like the backbone of the American economy, right? That's so when correct. you when you exactly, and so when you put all that together, like you have even more added. Did you ever feel that even added responsibility of making sure that paychecks worked for those small companies, even though they didn't work for you? 
Well, I'll tell you, there's nothing can be more upsetting to an employer than not to be able to pay his employees. Absolutely. Accurately and on time. So Paychex's number one responsibility is to make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we do it for 670,000 businesses across the United States. It's quite a responsibility. Right. Uh, you know, you, you need a quality workforce and you need software, computer systems that are very accurate and very dependable and reliable. It's a big deal if people can't get paid. And I, I was in that situation where in the, in the early days where I couldn't deliver paychecks on time because of computer problems. Got you. Uh, that is the definition of pressure. Right. You got employers standing at your desk waiting for their paychecks for their employees and you can't hand them to them. That is that is a serious situation. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. Startup Nation, we are wrapping up with Tom Galasano, the author of Built Not Born, a self-made billionaire's no-nonsense guide uh, for entrepreneurs. You can purchase that on TomGalasano.com or on Amazon. And if you're listening on the replay on the podcast, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access. So, Tom, if you would, kind of share with us about the Galasano Foundation and all the work that it does. Uh, sure. Uh, started a family foundation back in 1987. Uh, I have a son who is uh, developmentally disabled. Right. So that obviously got me thinking about this arena. And we started a family foundation in 87, and all of its grant, uh, grant gifts are to organizations that deal with people with developmental disabilities. Right. Uh, uh, the foundation has been very, very important in the Rochester community, and now it's extending its uh, offerings down into southwest Florida, where I live in the wintertime, of course. Gotcha. Uh, it, it's, uh, the foundation has become a very important part of the com uh, developmentally disabled community in Rochester, and we expect it will be doing exactly the same thing in southwest Florida. Okay. Very proud of it, and it's done a lot of very positive things, everything from helping build... Uh, uh, workshops, sheltered workshops for people, uh, to providing health facilities. Uh, we also have had a very strong relationship with the Special Olympics, okay, uh, which was not funded by the foundation. I did that personally. Gotcha. But what that is about is, you know, children or youngsters that uh, participate in the Special Olympics, many of them do not have the adequate physical medical exposure uh, by doctors. So what we did is we created a situation where we had all kinds of doctor volunteers come to the Olympic events, and before the actual events, they would diagnose the children, and they would focus on eyes, ears, feet, teeth, etc. Mm. And it's amazing the amount of young people uh, that we found had these deficiencies. So then... In the example of eye issues, we had a co corporation give us 100,000 pairs of eyeglasses. Mm. Okay? Right. So if we detect a, a young person with uh, an eyeglass need, we're able to deliver them almost immediately. Uh, it's something we started. It's not only nationwide, it's worldwide now. For sure. So For sure. Uh, we're very proud of that. It was done outside the foundation, but obviously in the same vein as the foundation. I hear that. I hear that. And if you want to check out that website for the Galasano Foundation, we have a link in the website. If you're listening to it on the replay on the podcast, they're in the show notes for easy access. Uh, before we wrap up today, Tom, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. You know, I, I appreciate you writing this book. I appreciate your time. Uh, we're, we're, you know, I know we've been talking to some of your representatives. We're going to send you a nice little care package just to say thank you for coming on the show. We really do. Uh, Very nice appreciate. of you. No, for sure. We definitely really appreciate your time. Just a little little sum from Memphis. You a little, little taste of Memphis, for sure. Uh, okay. So, for sure. So, I want to ask you, you know, I'm actually going to turn the microphone over to you, Tom, because there's an entrepreneur out there who feels stuck in their business or they're afraid to even start. Give them some words of motivation, if you would, to tell them to, to, to go ahead and start or keep moving forward, if you would. Well, if they've already started and it's difficult, stay with it. As long as you don't get to a situation where it's absolutely impossible to recover. Sure. Because I'll tell you, there's nothing more gratifying, more rewarding, not only financially, but uh, uh, your mind. Uh, there's nothing more gratifying than having a successful business enterprise. 
And also, not as a byproduct, you probably are going to create jobs for people in the community. You're probably going to be more generous in philanthropic areas. Uh, but also keep in mind, you if you have a family, you can't ignore them. See, a lot of entrepreneurs just put everything they got into their business and ignore their family. You can't do that. You got to do it the best you can in keeping it balanced. I but it's worth it. Don't give up unless you have to. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you so much. And that's our time with Tom Galasano. Tom, did you enjoy being on the show? Sure, I did. I appreciate it. I hope you'll be willing now that to come. I know I'm going to get a gift too. That <laughs> extra special. Fair enough. And I hope you'll be willing to come back when you write your autobiography for sure. Uh, thank you. No I'll worries. remember that. No worries. All right, Sandra Mission. So I really hope you enjoyed Tom's time here on The Startup Life. Uh, he really gave some amazing value. But don't go anywhere just yet. When we come back, I'm going to share a few of my thoughts and some of the stuff I wanted to ask him if I had a whole lot more time with him. My name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. This episode of The Startup Life is also brought to you by our amazing partners at SCORE Memphis. Look, entrepreneurship is hard, and there is nothing like a mentor that can help you navigate those waters. And that is what SCORE provides. SCORE mentors provide years of expertise and have resources that will have you flourishing and profitable on your path to entrepreneurship. If you are in need of a mentor, give SCORE a call. The number is 901 901- Five four four three five eight eight, or go to their website at memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. Startup Nation, Kenda and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stop by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when your entrepreneurs like us... That's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick and mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, Start your target journey with the link in our show notes where you can expect more and pay less. Welcome back, Startup Nation, to the Startup Life with your host, Dominic Lawson. I really hope you enjoyed our conversation with Tom Galasano, founder and chairman of Paychecks and author of the book that we talked about today, Built Not Born, a self-made billionaire's no-nonsense guide for entrepreneurs. He gave tremendous value, Startup Nation. I hope you really caught that. Startup Nation, when I'm mentoring people or talking to people about starting their business or their company or whatever the case may be, or their path to entrepreneurship, they always ask like, look, what book should I read? What podcast should I listen to? And stuff like that. First of all, I tell them the, as far as the podcast goes, you need to listen to the Startup Life podcast for sure on all major podcast platforms. But one of the books I'm going to definitely add to that list is built, not born. And I'm really not just saying it. Startup Nation, look, 
It reads like a textbook, but like I said to Tom, in a, in a very flattering way, it breaks down concepts and, and gives you tangible tools on your path to entrepreneurship. And it backs it up with anecdotes and great stories to make sure that those 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 business concepts that he talks about really does stick. One of the things I really wanted to talk to him about that we didn't really get into is how a lot of times when we have competition in our business, competition in our industry. We want to kind of go after them or go for the jugular, you know, cutthroat, if you will, right? But Tom doesn't take that approach. Matter of fact, he, he says in the book that he's often friends and have great relationships with some of his competitors in the book because he says that, look, you never know when you may need them. You never know when you may need a helping hand. And, and he talks about in the book where they kind of came to his aid in the early days uh, of paycheck. So I thought that was fascinating as well. And also Startup Nation, I think when we talk about successful uh, American businessmen like Tom Galasano, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see how certain things that happen in their youth kind of affect or guides the way that they kind of run a business or their philosophy and things of that nature. So Tom tells this story about when he was in his youth and he worked at the postal service and how uh, the supervisor would give him eight hours of work to you know deliver mail or whatever the case may be. Right. And so he would go out, you know, deliver the mail, but Tom figured out how to do it you know, faster and more efficient to where to the point where he would do it in half the time. So he would get back to the supervisor and say, hey, I'm done. He's like, no, you're not. It's like, yeah, I am. I, I figured out how to do it faster. And, you know, the supervisor would be like, look, th that usually takes eight hours of time. You know, you, you can't possibly be done. Obviously, you know, Tom's still pleading with him, whatever the case may be. And so the supervisor said, like, look, each day when you come to work, I don't want you know, when you go out to do your deliveries or whatever, I don't want to see you until five o'clock. So what Tom would do at that point, he would go out, do his deliveries and have the time. And then the rest of the time up until five o'clock, he'll go hang out with his friends. And Tom would says in the book that it was at that point that he could never really trust government to do things efficiently or anything, uh, you know, run things efficiently or wherever the case may be. And I think that plays a big part into his political life and why he ran as an independent as opposed to a Democrat or Republican or whatever the case may be. And look, Starlight Nation, this show is apolitical. You know, uh, I, I'm not talking bad about government or something like that. But I think that really, you know, framed his way of thinking when it comes to the political process and uh, government entities and things of that nature. But I think it's important when we learn from titans of industry like Tom Galasano, where some of their philosophy comes from and see if we can pick up uh, uh, certain things here and there from uh, that path of entrepreneurship or their path of their career, mind you. Startup Nation, another thing that Tom talks about in his book, and I think is really important as you engage and as you go down your path of entrepreneurship, is that, you know, and he's invested in many companies, many business ventures and things of that nature. And I'm pretty sure most of you have listened to Shark Tank. I'm sorry, watch Shark Tank or whatever the case may be. And one of the things they always talk about is having skin in the game, right? And Tom is no different. He wants you to have skin in the game because, you know, as you talk to investors and build those pitch decks and stuff like that, it's very important uh, that they see that like you're willing to to risk it. You're willing to sacrifice something because look, Startup Nation, in this game of entrepreneurship, in this game of building a business and stuff like that, you have got to sacrifice something. I was talking to uh, some young people at the University of Memphis just the other day. You're going to have to sacrifice either some money. You're going to have to sacrifice some time. You're going to sacrifice some friends. At the end of the day, you're going to sacrifice something. And I think that's the important thing. And Tom really illustrates that in his book, Built Not Born. And so automation, you may be thinking I'm giving up all the tea in this episode, and I'm really not. There is so much value in the book. There is so much content in the book. Like I said, it really does read like a very good textbook from the standpoint of anecdotes and business concepts. And once again, the, the book is Built Not Born, a self-made billionaire's no-nonsense guide for entrepreneurs. And you can get that if you listen to the podcast replay, you can get that TomGalasano.com. The link is there in the show notes. The Amazon link is in the show notes uh, as well, or wherever you get your book. It, it's, it's in stores today. So go ahead get that out. And actually, when you get it from TomGalasano.com, there's actually some extras that he's that he's thrown in as well. See, look, entrepreneurs are all about giving people 
value. So that's going to be our time today, Startup Nation. I really hope you enjoyed it once again. And as always, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.